Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to appreciate your presence amidst us. Your power of the Holy Spirit can be felt in the activities of the day to worship you here. I wish you want to hear your touch through thy gospel that we are going to share right away. We want to believe in you, God, that this is not me, neither this is it for a specific person, but you have prepared this gospel that it might reach its attained goals, that it might reach its destination to save souls, to win children, to live a holy life, and God more so, that we may be a living example, a living sacrifice, acceptable offering, wherever we are for your glory. So we invite your presence now once again. Open our deep hearts, our deep mind, our deep eyes, our deep, so that we can understand, we can carry this word with us in our journey of faith that we may have an example to lean on because you are faithful. Now speak, we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today I'm speaking about God's choice of offering. I don't know whether in your life you've heard this question. Whatever I'm bringing to God, is it your talent? Is it your offering? Is it your testimony? Is whatever you have been given by God, have you ever took time to ask, is it God's choice? Amen. Amen. I want to share with you a great testimony of giving and the choice of God's offering that I've experienced in my officership. I remember this lady, she was sick, and we were praying for her as a church. We prayed, and things never got better. They worsened daily. From home, from just the clinics around, referred to next level of of hospital and finally she ended up admitted in the hospital and at the ward things never went better also she was transferred from the normal beddings to the ICU as she was as she was in ICU she also went in coma for four months she never ate she never talked and we were there praying one by one would come and pray. She never heard what we were saying. I don't know whether she knew that or what, well, if she heard that. But after four months, this woman came back. And when she came back, she talked. And the first person who was next to her, she said, Where is my tithing card? And it was brought. By the time they went to bring the tithing card and bring it to the hospital, again she, was, she went asleep. And when it came, she woke up. She said, is it up to date? If you were her child, what would you do? If you were the child of that woman, what would you do? And the family gathered quickly, put 
all the money is required for her tithe for those four months. And they brought to me. And when they brought to me, I was surprised that this woman woke up and said, where is my tithing card? And it has been brought to me, and they have put all the money they wanted. And we prayed together with the family, the person who brought the tithe card with the tithes. And immediately we prayed. By the time we were saying amen, she breathed her last and went to be with the Lord. What would you think of such a type? If you were with wearing my shoes, if you were the one to conduct the funeral, if you were the one to see her lying dead, what would you think? What would you say? And after reading this and after seeing all this, the Lord inspired me to speak about God's choice of offering to you today. The best we could pick from the Bible is Abraham. Hallelujah. 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 Unajua, Abraham played very minimal role to have his son Isaac. If it was not for God, would Isaac be born? If it was not for God, at his 100 years, he was not going to have a son. If it was not God's miracles and provision, it has never been. The rest of the children that we've had that have been born by old parents, they were all Nazarene. Children with covenant with God. But this Isaac came as a promise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God took his time until when Isaac could be loaded with the firewood. Hallelujah. You see, when Isaac is being taken for offering, he's not a young boy. At least we can gather from the Bible and say, when they offloaded the donkey, the firewood that was being carried, it was put on Isaac to take it to where Abraham had been shown the vision to offer the offering. And you know, the journey is very, the start is very humble. God says to Abraham, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. We have all children. We have all children. Not one, sometimes two. I'm blessed with the two children. You are blessed with the two or three. You are blessed maybe like Abraham with one. If you are taught today, take that child and offer as a burnt offering. Burning. Burn that child alive as an offering. How many have the strength to move on with this journey or this challenge or this test. How many amidst us? But Abraham, he was told, take your son, 
your beloved son, your only son, and go and burn him as an offering to me. Take him to the mountain, I will show you. And do exactly what I've told you. And the following morning, Abraham wakes up, calls his two servants, loads his donkey, prepares himself adequately for offering, and off he starts the journey. And the question always comes, did Abraham explain this to Sarah? What do you think? What do you think? Did Abraham explain this to Sarah? What do you think? Yay. Are you there? Munaniskia? Are we together? Did Abraham explain this to Sarah? What do you think? What do you think would have happened if Sarah was aware that his son, only son, beloved son, was going for an offering? Not just an offering, a burnt offering. Would the journey be there the following day? Would the journey be there the following day? Maybe that night, Sarah would have divorced the husband and run away with the child. Right? That's our thinking. But God knows if Sarah was going to be told about the journey of the sacrifice of son, what would have happened? Look at how God chooses what is best for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in Leviticus, God speaks about the lame. Talks about the things that are physically challenged. Talks about the things that are lowly. And he says, this do not belong to me. Because God is interested with the best. And the best for this time for Abraham, it was not cows and donkeys. He had plenty of them. It was not part of his servants. He had plenty of them. But he was interested with the best of the best. And that was his son. Hallelujah. 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 And he says, speak this best and take it for me. Give it as a burnt offering. And this is very clearly said. It's a test. My friend, even today, God demands for the best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Munajua, when we come to the church, as I said earlier, People would look for the lowest, for the little. That is what they would prefer to do best. Look at how people do their own personal things. And look at the things that belong to God. How they struggle day by day before they are achieved. Why? Because the best has been left out. And the question comes, has my offering, has my self-denial, has my type thing been the best and acceptable to God? The story of Cain and Abel. Hallelujah. And the and Bible explains very well that Abel never took that which was not worthy. He was selective in choosing what he was taking to God. And you know what? God in heaven was observing every step of these two. The, the step of Cain and the step of Habel. And what happened when they brought them before God? Hallelujah. 
Cain's offerings were rejected, but God accepted the offerings that were brought by Abel. I still want to pose this question. Is what you have set aside for God acceptable? And I want to remind you, our God is selective. Whatever you have to bring, he demands for the best, for he has given you the best. You know what? Sometimes we can pretend and leave every best thing for us. And bring that which is not the best to God. But do you think God is sleeping? Do you think God is not seeing it? Do you think God is not aware of the deeper intentions in you? Don't you know that God is the one who provided? There are so many people around us, around where you stay, who went through what you have gone through and they have not yet been blessed with that. Hallelujah. Many are the times Abraham would go through and through so many things in this world from where God called him to where he is and what God has achieved through is him and he knows what is best for him. You know, God has blessed you. God has blessed me. Do we present the best to him? Have you already presented the best for him? You know, when you present the best, he has the next say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many, many will toil in this land, Nairobi, and later go back home when the years are advanced without something to say. I have achieved because God was in front of me and I did what was the best. Amen. 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 God chose his offering the best that Abraham had. And today we are speaking about self-denying. You know, when I was speaking with so many people about self-denial, from Thursday I called many and many. And you know, the story was very encouraging. Captain, I've just paid my rent. Captain, I've just taken back my children to school. Captain, you know, I am traveling from here to here. Captain, you know, times are not easy. I'm receiving half of my salary. Captain, you know, you know, and you know. <laughs> and I, and I even went further to ask a few of them. What if this was your last offering? Can I ask you the same question? What if this was your last self-denial? You know, God, God wants the best. And out of the best, God speaketh blessings. Amen. For three days, Abraham journeyed with his son, going to the land, to the promised altar where God was going to show him. For three days, for three days, Abraham journeyed with his son. 
Oh my God. How long have you journeyed with your tithe and offering, with your self denial? You know, since we announced it in March, surprisingly, surprisingly, majority had not yet shown up. And even now, we are still reaching towards the end. We are still in the journey. We are still in the journey. What are you thinking? Are you thinking like the rest who fought a good fight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you thinking like those who were ahead of us? Tunafuata wa zamani. Are you thinking in those lines? You know, I still think of what Abraham thought about his son. And sometimes I even ask myself, in these three days, was he going to tell him that you are going to be our burnt offering? And for three days, he never revealed. No wonder it goes silence. And even after they, he departs from the servants, and they remain the two of them. Isaac asks the firewood, the fire, everything for the offering is ready. Where is the lamb? And the father says, God will provide. Ends there. And the journey continues. Hallelujah. 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 The best for God that has, he has provided for you. My friend, it's between you and God. Sometimes we talk and tell you, do this, do this. We think you can do this. But I, we still do not exhaust what God has done to you. The best person to make a decision it is between you and your God to give the best. Yes, we might say 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 30,000, but God might be far ahead with you and you know that God demands for the best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I have been looking at how people have been giving how people have been responding to the call to give their self-denial. It's really impressing. Until sometimes you tell someone, you do not belong here. Until you tell someone, this is not your status. God has still best in you that you can produce. Amen. 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 Your journey with the Lord will determine the blessings that God has for you. Because you might present not the best. And it just pleases the eyes of men. And the blessings you leave them here. Look at the choice of altar. Verses 9. When Abraham looked up and saw the place that God had told him, this is where you are going to do your offering. And he reached there, and he prepares an altar for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we have many altars. And why people miss the best is because of Mixed priorities in outers. Mixed priorities in outers, which we present our offerings. Do you know where we are? Is it just another place on a Sunday? Do you know who you are? Do you know the relationship we, you have the, 
Do you know what journey you are involved in? These are the questions that always go round and round and round in my mind. When you are gone, and I am in my own personal business, do they reflect that I'm coming from an altar, an altar of God? May God help us. May God help us. Most of the times, the great men in the Bible, when they had a vision, when they slept and had a vision, an encounter with God, they would prepare an altar. And most of the times, we are here. Your visions, your visions that God speaks to you must have an encounter with this altar. Your altar is here. Although some of us are confused, the altars are mixed. Today, purely your heart is here. Purely you are in white. Purely you are saved to serve. Purely you are energized to move forward to spread the gospel. But immediately we live here. You join up with the friends in clubs and bars. You are a drunkard. You join with friends and workmates to erect an altar of fighting your fellow workmates, incitements. You are, you are involved in different altars. You are even found in witchcraft. Is that altar complete? Is that outer complete? Yes, we can be together, singing together, praising God together here. In songsters, in band, in all the brigades you might be there. But immediately you leave, your outer changes. Do you even know who you are? Do you know the relationship you started? You know, Abraham, in his journey of faith, he knew he has made an altar for God. And that's why he obeyed God. Even when he said, move from this land to the land that I will show you. He journeyed with God because he knew he has begun a new altar. Not the altar of the gods he used to worship before. Hallelujah. 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 And when he built the altar, verses 11 to 14, God never stopped him when he was building the altar. God never stopped him when he placed firewood on the altar. God never stopped him even when he tied his son. God never stopped him even when he placed his son on the altar. God never stopped him even when he was reaching out his hand to reach the knife. Oh my God, help us. God, help us. God is not a man that you can test him. He remained silent until when the knife was in Abraham's hand. And he was ready to stamp the son. To kill the son. That's when the angels talked to him and said, I now know. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 12. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For I now know that you fear God. That you fear God. You know what? Shh. 
someone will give a testimony about you. Either angels in heaven or angels here on earth that are related with God will give a testimony of who you are. Do you fear God? The best choice of offering is to fear God from deep your heart. And the things you do must reflect that you fear God and obey his word to the end. You see, in the book of Luke chapter 21, and Jesus was on the altar observing people giving. Seeing what people are presenting to him. And the rich were giving and the poor were giving. And his attention was caught by this woman. A poor widow, a poor widow came maybe after many had given. And Jesus says they were given out of their abundance. Out of the many that God had blessed them with. And this one was here without that much. Actually, I have everything. That is what she presented in the altar. And Jesus saw it and says, this poor window has given more than any other. May God help us. Now, we are still giving. We are in our period of giving and God is seeing every giving that we do give. God knows the much you have and the little that I have. God knows the much I have and the little that I will have. And his choice out of much or little is the best. And Jesus says, this poor widow gave all that she had. And today we are so many here. Today we are so many here. And God is observing everything we are doing. Would he say to you, you gave to the best? Would he say to you, well done my daughter. Well done my son. Well done. You fear me from the bottom of the heart. And your offering is the best. Do you think you've carried the best? Do you think you've given the best? Do you think it's enough? And the Bible records these words. I now know that you fear the Lord. Before you are known, before you are approved of the testimony that you fear the Lord, you must develop that fear of God in you. Amen. You must develop it. Our call to worship, be deep-rooted. Most of Christians are shallowly rooted. That's why here, we have a soldiership of 3,916 soldiers. But when you look at the people who move forward to give, in the tithe book, we are 600. As of now, the list that I'm carrying here, 113 are in my list. 
And the number? And the number? You don't want to say that? And the number? It's dropping. I now wonder what God would say if he questions the a hundred and. <laughs> Do you think you will pull through? Do you think you will pull through? Is it the best? Can he say, I now know you fear the Lord? It's only, look at this verse 14. 13. It's only when you fear the Lord that the Lord will provide. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. It's only when you prove that you fear the Lord, God will provide. Look at the provision that God provided to Abraham. He looks up. Maybe expecting to see this angel who is speaking to him. Instead of seeing the angel, what does he see? A ram caught by the thickets by its horns. And he says, this is God's provision for my offering. Amen. Amen. And gladly he unties his son, gets the ram, and offers it as the offering that God pleases. That, God, that pleases God. He offers it as the offering, the best offering that God has provided. See the move God is doing from, from Isaac. To the ram. Because God is not interested in human sacrifices. Oh, hallelujah. I know. If today parents who are here and you have a child who is disturbance. And you are asked. Out of this, which one? Out of this four, five, two, three. Which one? You would quickly run to the one who disturbs. But here... God chose a pure son, Isaac. Symbolic. Very symbolic. Isaac, up to where it has reached, remained a symbolic thing that God will give his only begotten son as a true living sacrifice, as a human sacrifice that is acceptable before God, that you and me might have that eternal life in accepting him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God still brings in the picture of a lamp. You know, John speaks about the lamp of God that takes away the sins of this world. And the picture is very clear during times of Abraham. That God has provided the best offering that I could ever do. He still had rams. As I began by saying. He still had kettles. He still had goats. He still had any other thing materially that he could provide. But God was testing his faith. Hallelujah. If you can't give the best. From the fear of God and the trust to God. Even when you have thousands and thousands and thousands. You still provide the weakest. You know. I have seen in churches people come in to exchange offering. No. I have 500. Please. Get the 500. Return for me. L l give me a 50. After we go out to you. I will give you. Give me the rest. I have seen it. Can I tell you. I am even surprised with you people here. I even go further to see what you do give. 
last Sunday, we counted only 50s, 50, 50, 50, 50, quarter, 50 shillings, 50 shillings, 50 shillings. They went up to 200 and 200 and and then I ask my God, did you bless this church with the members of 50s? 50, 50, 50, 50. We had 200 plus. How many are carrying 50s here? You will be surprised half to give offering. How many have been blessed such kind? It's a shame. Do we give the best? And no wonder, without the car park, you are not even able to pay your officers. That is a very sad story in Nairobi Central. God calls you, and he appointed me here to bless you that you may bless his work. You are not blessed to be proud or to hold back to what God has given you. He still can transfer. I know when I say this, few would say amen. But I want to repeat it. He can transfer the five hundreds and bring you what you deserve, the fifties and the twenties. He has done it before. Have you never ever seen people who were rich becoming poor? Have you? Don't you know the secret? We do not worship idols. Najua kuna wengine wana mapepo. Na mapepo yanapoisha nguvu wanarudi kule chini. But we worship a true God who can sustain you. And I'm coming there. Generations to generations. God is capable of receiving whatever you have never presented to him in his own ways. And it is unless you give and give freely that you become part of God's choice and a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12. When God is challenging you to become a living sacrifice. It's until you develop in yourself to be able to give freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know there are people here at Amusini too and I toanga na You know at one time when I was serving in another appointment we contributed all we had in cash and we only wanted 50 shillings. 50 shillings. And you know what? We stood for almost 20 minutes asking for congregation to contribute a 50 shilling. And there's one lady who had just that one 50 shilling. And she never gave it. And so we prayed and said, no, God will provide. And off each one went home. What happens the following Sunday? She came back to repent and say, Captain, I'm very sorry. You know, this 50, I refused to give it on Sunday. It has taunted me throughout the week. I could not even spend it. Please receive it and give it on my behalf as a sacrifice also before God. And why do we go that long journey, Christians? Let me go to the next part. Verses 15 to 20. Blessings of God's children for accepting to offer God's choice. Hallelujah. This part I've given it this topic or this theme. Blessings of God's children for accepting to offer God's choice. Hallelujah. See what the angel says. 
And the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I swore, declared the Lord, because you have done this, you have not withheld your son, your only son. I will, I will read your Bible. I will, are we together? Do you have your Bible? Read that verse, verse 17. Either in Swahili, either in which language, read it. I will. I will give you. I will surely bless you. This is God saying, I will surely bless you. Have you ever discovered why some of us work too hard for nothing? I call it nothing because you work wanakosa kukulipa. You plan inakosa kumaterialize. You do this is not waking up. Is you do this even when you are very tired and you are expecting God to bless the work of your hands, is not doing the mathematics. It is because you have left the blessings of giving what belongs to God. Malachi puts it, give to God what belongs to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is when you decide to give what belongs and the best for God and freely. It's when God says, I will surely bless you. What is it saying in Swahili? Verse 17. Seventeen. It says what in Swahili? Katika kubariki. You are, you, are, you are very slow in reading. I don't know why. Do you have your Bibles? Katika kubariki. Nita kubariki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will surely. Katika kubariki. Nita kubariki. This is what God says. He has these blessings for you. And you have to. Wake up and grasp them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will multiply. No division. No plus. No minus. But God says, I will multiply. Nitazidisha. You know, God does not multiply with the zeros. Neither does he multiply with the ones. When he wants to bless you. We know what zeros and ones do to the number when you multiply it. Do we? Do we? But God does not Multiply with ones and zeros. Do you know how God multiplies in the Bible? He has talked about it. How many times? How many times? Yes. Tens. A hundreds. Thousands. He says, will be. <laughs> the measure you give shall be measured back to you, pressed down. This is the mathematics of how God multiplies back. He told Abraham, your children who be like the stars, who be like the sand in the seashore. These blessings still stand to you. You see what he says? Let me continue with the blessings. Verse 
verse 17. Towards the end there, it says, And your offsprings, offsprings shall possess the gates of his enemies. <laughs> hey, what is that? What is that? Now, Zao Wako. Now, Zao Wako. Utamiliki. Milango ya duizako. See the blessings going to, the, to your children and children's children. That's why I said. God does not bless you to let you down. Read the book of Job. Though the enemy took away what belongs to him, at the end of the day, what happened? It was brought back and multiplied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are uh, giving our self-denial and God is here ready to bless you with what you are uh, giving him. Yes, he might be telling you it's not enough. Do something. Yes, you might be hearing his voice. He's saying it is not enough. Change. Do it better. I want to give you this opportunity. And we are going to pray and claim these three, four blessings. There are four blessings that are attached to giving that Abraham was promised. And today, we really want to pray for these blessings. What are you lacking? Are you lacking this, the start of the journey, the blessings? Are you without work? Is your work stable? Is your business doing what it's supposed to do? These are blessings we need to claim today as you present your self-denial. Do you want children? Do you have children? Do you want them multiplied? God is the one who gives them. You offsprings, do you want them to see the blessings of possessing other people's gates? You know, sometimes when they steal our lands, when they get and they become our enemies, they do whatever will make them enemies, then they, they are there disturbing our hearts and our soul and our spirits. And you can still claim this blessing and say, oh God, Raise up my children to be able to possess the gates of our enemies. I really wish all Christians who possess these blessings, our country will go to the right direction. No more enemy will be left behind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want to see nations being blessed through you? God is giving us a test to give to him. And this is the test I'm presenting to you. What have you given in terms of self-denial? What was your expectations? God is, wants to bless you. And I want to give you this opportunity. I will ask Captain Elizabeth to go up there. And they receive personally from you your self-denial. And you who are here, you will bring it here where I am. We want to receive and bless and speak like the angel of the Lord. Who told Abraham, in blessings I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply your blessings. In regard to your enemies, your children who possess, 
in all these things, God is really promising much greater things. This is the altar God has prepared for you today. Rise up and bring your self-denial. Rise up and bring your self-denial to God. Someone, servant of God, is there to receive it. Is there to receive it and we are going to pray as you also pray. And I'm sure God's blessings attached to giving will never be in vain. If you didn't carry it in cash, you can give it through the pay bill number. That is already here with us. Pay it. Pay it. Test the Lord. Overcome the powers of poverty by testing God with what he has given to you. I'm sure in you, he has already blessed you. Do not leave the blessings of God. Rise up. Come forward as you come and give to him and as we pray. After you have given and you wish to kneel down and tell God what you want, still the message is open for you that you can claim these blessings. I know the Lord is speaking to you. I know the Lord is inspiring you. If you have given through the pay bill and you still want to speak it to the Lord about the choice of his offering and you want to tell him to accept your offering, here, the message is here for you. You can come and tell God this offering, this self-denial, this that I've denied, I've denied from the bottom of my heart. And God knows it. He will speak such great blessings upon your life. Rise up if you're ready. Come forward if you're ready. Bring it. Bring it forth there at the balcony. Captain is ready now to receive it. Come forward. Bring it to the Lord. He is faithful. He is all-knowing and full of blessings for you. And because he's faithful, he is going to achieve to you what you've asked for. Come forward and God bless you. God bless you, madam. God bless you. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Even as you come forward. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Even as you present your self-denial to the Lord. The mercy seat is still ready here for you. The mercy seat is still ready for you here. Come and meet the Lord. Whom you came to worship in this altar. God bless you. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. 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 Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Amen. God bless you. 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 
Surely we know that you fear the Lord. May the blessings of our almighty God be with you. May you multiply. May your blessings multiply in different ways. May your offsprings possess the gates of your enemies. Through your generations, may their blessings to the world. Mighty God, our everlasting Father, in those days you spoke these words with your, through your angel. And as your servant, I stand to proclaim these blessings to your children who today have shown to the world, shown that they are willing to deny themselves, to deny their, what they have in terms of cash, to bring before you, to honor you, and to worship you through the blessings that you have given. To Abraham, you had so many blessings in his family, but you chose his son. But this was to test. We know that God, you also have chosen a portion of us that we may worship you. And here, 
we present before you. Your children have been given this self-denial since March. And this is the second last week of our giving of our self-denial. May you multiply their blessings in a special way. May you start a new blessings today. The blessings of faith, the blessings of possessing even the gates of their enemies. May those that will live close to them experience the blessings that they are carrying with them. And let them be a blessings to many. You've called us for this noble task that we may enjoy in your presence the blessings that are attached to giving to you. And I pray for your children. Not just because of self-denial, but also because of their offerings, because of other appeals and ministries, because of their tithes they are giving. I want to pray that your anointing of blessings shall always be portion of them. And your children have nailed on the message. They have listened to your voice and they have given and came even before you that they may sanctify even what they have brought forth. And I pray for them. I pray that this message, this altar you've erected for your children will never be in vain. Every time they kneel before you, they will be restrengthened. They will be energized. They will be given the power because you are meeting with them. What a blessing Abraham went home with. What a blessing your children are going home today with. Because you have anointed them and blessed them. Their business will continue. Their business will never go down. Their workplace, there will be promotions out of this. Their farms, God will produce yields and yields. God, their animals will multiply because you are faithful, God. Their families will be a blessing and a blessing to each one because you are good, God. Bless everyone. Those that have given now, those gave yesterday, last month, last week, they have all given this self-denial to you. Those that are still working out forward, there are those that are still struggling and they have promised to do it within the week. Open doors for them that they may join in the blessings of giving and giving self-denial 2021. In Jesus' name, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. God bless you and uplift you and that you should never lack for giving to him. Amen. 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 Amen.